Hello, my name is Oliver Grantman, and this is Kratom Support from the University of Florida College of Pharmacy. What is Kratom? Kratom, also known by its Latin name Mitragyna speciosa, is an evergreen tree native to Southeast Asia, primarily Indonesia, Thailand, Borneo, and Malaysia. The tree grows along streams and was first described by the Dutch botanist Corthalus in the 1800s, who observed the leaves being used by locals to provide an energy boost during the day when fresh leaves are briefly chewed or when the leaves are used to make a tea, which is consumed at home for a variety of uses. Interesting side note, its name Metrogyna is derived from the shape of the leaves that look like a bishop's mitre. Those uses, traditional uses, include conditions like pain, gastrointestinal issues like diarrhea, upset stomach as a mood booster, and for fever and general malaise. Kratom is also used to mitigate withdrawal symptoms if other psychoactive substances like opium, heroin, or stimulants are scars, which frequently happens in Southeast Asia. The rise in diverse Kratom products in the US was initially dominated by dried Kratom leaf powders that were dissolved in water or juices. Because of the unpleasant and rather bitter taste of the powder, capsules and tablets, as well as flavoring agents, soon gained popularity. In recent years, we have seen diverse products like extracts, concentrates, and isolates being sold. These are definitely more problematic Kratom products. Is Kratom an opioid? There has been a lot of public and scientific discussion about Kratom being an opioid. Kratom is not a single substance like aspirin or Tylenol, but rather a mixture of thousands of different compounds found in the leaf. These include flavonoids, terpenoids, and alkaloids, among others. Most of the reported effects appear to be associated with the presence of alkaloids, in particular the indole alkaloid mitragynin. Mitragynin does act on opioid receptors, but different from most prescription opioids like hydrocodone or oxycodone. Mitragynin is not as strong and can only reach a certain amount of opioid receptors. However, mitragynin also acts on other receptors that may explain the reported effects of mood boosting, likely by acting on serotonin, and adrenergic receptors. Several other alkaloids found in kratom leaves also have effects on the body, and that explains the complexity of effects observed and reported by kratom users, researchers, and healthcare professionals who study kratom. Some of the surveys that have been conducted over the past decade indicate that Kratom may be more of a stimulant, like coffee, while others report a mood-elevating and social engaging effect, as we often see with alcohol. The most common beneficial effects reported by users are pain relief, mood elevation, and energy or focus-boosting properties. A few clinical studies report that the pain-relieving effects of Kratom usually last for about two to three hours, and we do know that Kratom sticks around in the body for about a day after its initial consumption. Much more research is needed to fully understand the effects, safety, and benefits of Kratom and its components. Is Kratom safe? There are several reports and warnings about Kratom use, and I would certainly not think of Kratom as an innocuous substance without any adverse effects. However, when looking at the traditional use of Kratom in its native Southeast Asia, there are few reports of substantial adverse effects. If we think of the alkaloids as the primary active components of Kratom, then the leaf material may contain between 2 to 5% of total alkaloids. So a one gram dose of Kratom will contain in the range of 20 to 50 milligrams of alkaloids, and about two thirds of that is mitragynin. We have to recognize that the old principle of the dose makes the poison applies to Kratom just like it applies to any other substance, including coffee, salt, medications, and so on. With that in mind, a Kratom extract or concentrate enriches the alkaloid content per dose meaning that there is a higher amount of alkaloids present. So instead of 20 to 50 milligram per gram of Kratom extract, there may now be 200 or even 500 milligram 
so 20 to 50% of alkaloids. That is much more than is found in the unaltered leaf material, and thus it increases the risk of adverse effects. Too much of a good thing, as they say. Kratom can also present with drug interactions. So if somebody takes prescription medications, over-the-counter drugs like Motrin, Advil, Tylenol, or others, or even supplements, there may be an increased risk of adverse effects. What we are primarily concerned about are drugs that act on the brain. Think antidepressants, anti-anxiety, or anti-seizure medications, but also drugs for heart disease, and especially drugs that impact our immune system, like chemotherapy and antibiotic drugs. Another important issue is the potential risk of dependence. We as researchers have coined the term Kratom Use Disorder, although this is not formally a medical condition. Rather, we do see users developing a dependence on Kratom, taking more than they intend to take, having a hard time reducing or quitting its use, and at times experiencing physical withdrawal symptoms that appear similar to either opioid or stimulant withdrawal. We do not have a good approach yet to treat kratom use disorder, and in most cases, a symptomatic treatment may be used. This often includes buprenorphine, uh, a common treatment for opioid use disorder, given that mitragynin does act on opioid receptors, but also other drugs may be utilized. It is very important to mention to your healthcare professional, your physician, your doctor, your nurse, your pharmacist, if you take kratom. Although many folks may not know about Kratom, there's definitely an increasing interest in it and more information becomes available to raise awareness of Kratom. What are reported benefits of Kratom? Let's first get the elephant in the room out of the way. Kratom is not approved for any health condition. The Food and Drug Administration in the United States actually warns against using Kratom and, as they should, are concerned with public health if people use Kratom products. However, Kratom is not per se banned in the US and is available in most states as of this recording in May 2025. So any benefits that we know of are based on surveys, interviews, as well as reports by Kratom users. Several surveys of Kratom users indicate that a primary benefit of Kratom is its energy boosting effect, similar to coffee. Kratom does not contain caffeine, although it is in the same plant family as the coffee shrub. Another benefit that many users report is elevation of depressive and anxiety mood disorders, as well as helping with symptoms of ADHD, which is attention deficit hyperactivity disorders, and PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorders. As noted before, pain relief is another common reported benefit. And about a quarter of users report it does mitigate some of the withdrawal symptoms experienced if discontinuing other substances, like opioids or stimulants. Again, it is important to note that there are no therapeutic indications for Kratom, and it is important to consult with a healthcare professional before taking any Kratom product. We do know from the traditional use of Kratom that it also shows benefit for people with diabetes, by lowering blood glucose levels. However, anybody with diabetes should be mindful that adding Kratom or any other substance that impacts blood glucose levels needs to be closely monitored so that they do not experience too low blood glucose levels, especially those who need to take insulin. Who should not take Kratom? Despite its reported benefits, Kratom has a complex pharmacology and we need to be aware of the limitations of its use. Many Kratom vendors now include on their label that their product should not be consumed by or sold to anybody under 18 or 21 years old. Because we do not know how Kratom may impact the developing fetus, Kratom consumption during pregnancy or while breastfeeding is not a good idea. There have been some reports of newborns of mothers who consumed Kratom presenting with withdrawal symptoms after birth, a risk no mother or parent wants to take. If a person has any pre-existing health conditions, especially in a neurological or cardiovascular condition, the use of Kratom may pose health risks, including interference with other medications, as well as negatively impacting those health conditions themselves. Some medications may be less effective if taken together with Kratom, 
while others may reach dangerous blood concentrations that lead to adverse effects. Kratom does have psychoactive effects, so taking it while operating a vehicle or machinery may lead to impairment. Although a small study in 10 individuals did not indicate a decrease in reaction time or impacting the driving performance. As a general rule, taking Kratom together with other medications or substances increases the risk of adverse effects. How can I find good Kratom products? With an increasing diversity of Kratom products on the market, it can be difficult to decide what product is of good quality. There are a few things to consider when choosing a Kratom product. Because several states have passed laws regulating the sale, marketing, and labeling of Kratom products, a product that adheres to these laws should be the baseline for considering what to purchase. Such laws in general regulate how much mitragynin and 7-hydroxymitragynin should be in a product. The label should also clearly list all ingredients, declare the amount of mitragynin per serving or on a weight basis, meaning 20 mg mitragynin per gram or about 2% mitragynin, and state what constitutes a serving size. In addition, the sale of Kratom products to minors, either being younger than 18 or 21 years, depending on the state, should be clearly stated on the label. There should be a warning against the use of Kratom by pregnant or breastfeeding women. Ideally, if the vendor is responsible, a warning should be included that a consumer consult with their physician, pharmacist, or other healthcare professional before taking the product. There is growing evidence that products that contain Kratom extracts, concentrates, or isolates, such as 40% mitragynin or pure 7 hydroxymitragynin are likely to cause an increased risk of adverse effects, including dependence, withdrawal, and even potentially life-threatening events, such as seizures or heart attacks. If you or somebody you know consumes Kratom products and experiences any unwanted or adverse effects, I strongly advise to consult with a healthcare professional. Your health and well-being are most important. And that is all I have. I hope you found the answers informative. This was Kratom support from the University of Florida College of Pharmacy.